Welcome to Between Two Beats. With me, as usual, is Ariel. Say hello, Ariel. Hello, everybody. <laughs> hello, everybody and one. Uh, we have been off for, for a week for various reasons, as we kind of hinted at it last time. Uh, this is one of those things where we put aside time, but uh, work and life kind of get in the way. But uh, we're going to try to knock off three episodes this week, and this is the uh, the first of, of three. And uh, like all of our AMAs, I go into it fairly cold, uh, you know, in this case, extremely cold, meaning I have absolutely yeah. no clue what the topic is. So what we're going to do is, first of all, uh, welcome to all the crickets. If uh, you are enjoying this, uh, feel free to uh, to chat up. We got the chat window up and uh, feel free to put in your questions there. Ariel will be monitoring that. And on that note, to you, Ariel. Thank you, Rob. Um, so we had a lovely warm weekend here in Brantford, Ontario. Um, I guess I kind of, you have no idea what I came up with for my questions as it's an AMA. So um, ask me anything. And we've definitely had our fair share of great topics. And another great topic I wanted to go into was user experience, which Ooh. I know you know a lot of. Mm. So um, I guess kind of to dive deeper into the user experience, you have to know where it started from, which would have been the dial-up days, which is well before my time. It's definitely your time being the older one of the two of us. But um, I guess, cause we don't do dial-up, or sorry, we don't do dial-up. We don't do um, surfing the web anymore, but I guess I wanted to ask you kind of what really is surfing the web, if you wanted to mm -hmm. kind of explain that. Okay, so 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 a couple of questions there. Obviously, uh, surfing the web uh, kind of puts us back into that world where the entire uh, internet was new and uh, and exciting and people literally would uh, surf channels on TV while they would surf websites on the internet. And back then the user experience was horrible, right? You had to go <laughs> through a lot of steps to get really really crummy speed and really really crummy data and really really crummy you know pixelated images, right? Uh, so, so there's really two elements there. The, 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 there's the user experience, which is very important, right? You know, what is the path? And that's not just digital. That's that's any engagement, right? Whether or not it's your sales funnel, whatever, um, you know. And then there's the design as well. So it's got to look apart, uh, but it's also got to do the part. And I think that's really the difference between the design you know, in the experience is, is there's an old diagram, right? It's like you, you create this well-crafted path and it's got this beautiful concrete and the people are just cutting through the grass because that's what the user experience is. They want to get from point A to point C and you're forcing them to curve over to B. Looks <laughs> gorgeous. It's a gorgeous design. The, you know, uh, the, 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 yeah. the, that part is done, but it's the experience. And that's whether or not that's the customer experience, the, the visitor experience, um, you know, the person experiencing this, you know, how did we engage them from the get go? Did we bring them in? Did we give them uh, a next step? Uh, did we uh, let them know what they can and cannot do? Uh, you know, did we navigate the journey a bit for them? But more importantly, is it open ended enough? And is the system, us in this case, you know, versed enough to be able to respond and provide that great experience? Because that's the difference is you're not getting a thousand, ten thousand people going through your funnel anymore. You're getting a few. And ideally so, those yeah, go for it. So I'm gonna say what what exactly was it like? Like describe it to me, kind of paint a picture of yeah. what surfing the web <laughs> okay. was and I guess how that relates to user experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, no, 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 that's fine. So so back in the day. Uh, you know, in the dial-up days, uh, you know, first of all, you know, if you were surfing the web, you weren't talking on the phone. It was an either or. You'd pick up the phone and you'd hear the modem going, <laughs> you know, you know, all the signals. <laughs> Fundamentally, you were hijacking, much like, you know, Alexander Graham Bell did with the telephone and the telegraph wires. We hijacked mm -hmm. bell lines to send signals. And that signal, instead of being this voice, which is what the, the phones were built for, was a series of audible tones when deciphered and enciphered at various ends, a machine would be able to go, hey, you're saying hello. I know what to do with the word hello. Oh, you want to set up a connection with me? And, you know, and that was the signal, to, uh, uh, you know, the, the verbal signal, if you will. But it was basically just a, an audio uh, series of, uh, of signals, right, with, with the tone, right? Uh, and that fundamentally set up 
the connection and you were basically just doing a phone to a phone, right? What routers have basically done since then is you're now connecting all of your devices into one machine whose sole job is to do that communication between two, two machines, right? And at the end of the day, that technology has not really changed. The speed has changed. The fact that we don't have to connect every time. But the biggest difference, and let's go even further back, uh, you know, to the BBS days before the, the web became the web, you needed to know the phone number to dial. And if there was someone already on that BBS and they only had the one line going into the BBS system, you were basically waiting and you were just queuing up and redialing and redialing. And then you got in and you're like, yay. And it was like 2,400 baht and it'd be like three minutes of connecting and, and 10 minutes of downloading, you know, pixelated porn. You know, but fundamentally the internet has always been that, but that's beside the point. But yeah, it's one of those things where the user experience required a high level of geekdom for lack of a better term, a lot, a lot of technical understanding, you know, grandma picking up the phone, getting yelled at, you know, why you just dropped my connection. Now I got to restart the entire download again. Right. So, so that experience was not just the computer, not just the gear, not just what you were connecting to, because like I said, the, the BBS days of the old were all command based, you know, and, and no different than navigating directories. Right. So when the web came along, you were doing the same thing. You were now connecting to the internet, but you needed a piece of software to surf the web. And that's where the browsers came in. You know, you had your Netscape. You, you don't even remember Netscape, you know what I mean? You had all of these things that, that Internet Explorer basically wiped the, the, the face of the planet with because they put Internet Explorer on every single Windows machine and all the other browsers out there died overnight, literally died overnight. So you now needed a piece of software that was able to render an HTML. Well, now the customer experience was how good is your browser, right? Is your browser up to date? Is it able to render the code? Is it, you know, so the speed of the browser, is it connected into your operating system? This was the big, you know, Internet Explorer Windows debate, right? Uh, mm -hmm. How good is your browser? Well, IE was a horrible browser, but they dominated the market. And for the longest time, a lot of our, our code base was built around a really crappy user experience browser and you had to build for it, right? So all of that came down to when you surfed the web, you were exposed to stuff you never knew about, right? It was truly discovery, right? You, you might go out there looking for information like an encyclopedia, you know, searching for something specific. But back then it was all about expanding your horizons and, and no different than social. It's always been about discovering stuff that you would normally not discover, you know, no different than, you know, my, my neighbor curating a, a playlist for me without me knowing what's on the list and being completely absorbed by a completely different list of songs, right? It's the yeah. same thing. That was what browsing was. You were opening yourself up to the good, bad, and the ugly of whatever, the internet in this case, right? But the experience was as limited as the tech. You know, if you had to experience the load time for a website circa 1995 versus now, you know, miss, I've got 5G on my phone and I'm just, you know, doing this and doing this and multitasking this. Oh my God, you're running multiple pieces of software at the same time. You know, no, you would hang up, right? So when we joke about the, if it doesn't load up in three seconds, your client base will turn around. Well, yeah, but you're also comparing it to a Gen X that, you know, there was a time where I would literally wait three minutes before a screen would load up. So it's all relative, yeah. right? I, I use the joke about the plane and complaining about the peanuts, right? You're on a friggin' plane. Mm -hmm. It's the same yeah. thing. But the user experience is where we differentiate, okay? Because now mm -hmm. everything has become, as you say, an appliance, or as we say, an appliance. And when it yeah. becomes the appliance is how good is that appliance? When you think of a Mac... That is a spectacularly slim, you know, sleek, well thought through from the second you power it up and you get the welcome bong, you know, and then you <laughs> go into setting it up and that overall unboxing feeling. Think of an unboxing, the, those great unboxing moments. That's user experience. How is that process? Is it just open up a piece of cardboard or is the cardboard purple? It's amazing um, so how much so that would do. <laughs> 
I know, I know. We've definitely come a long way. Um, I'm not from the dial-up days, but I probably started using around MSN days mm-hmm. and like when, um, yeah, probably, I, I probably started using the internet when I was maybe about seven. So I guess it would have been early 2000s mm-hmm. and it was still slow, but even like compared to now, it's funny because my younger siblings, as you know, I have many. Um, my younger sister, I just laugh because she, to me, like she has no idea what how slow it was when I was younger. And but it's the same with me to you. Like I have no idea how how dial up how you could even deal with that. Like that's we've definitely come a long way and thank goodness for that in, in many positive ways. Um, but somewhere along that line, I kind of wanted to tie this to was e- e-commerce came into play. Obviously, yep. that had a huge role. Um, so I kind of wanted to dive in and talk about how what role does e-commerce play on user experience or UX? Mm-hmm. So fundamentally, it's that last bit of, of the scenario is getting money from people, right? So if you think of the evolution, it was here's information that you can discover, peruse, browse, right? The information and the layout, right? We were building stuff like, uh, you know, MediConsult predated Web or WebMD, right? And the idea was you would log into this Lotus Domino server and you'd have all the information you needed about medical and you'd have doctors talking to you, you know, and all that stuff that we talk about, right? That evolved and evolved and evolved and evolved. And like I said, if you compare uh, telemedicine now versus telemedicine then, things have changed dramatically, right? And, you know, if mm-hmm. the doctor's not on video where you, or, you know, the time it takes you to get, uh, 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 you know, uh, an x-ray now where you could literally just text it faster, you know what I mean? So it's that user experience. We become demanding of things that mm-hmm. have become um, commonplace. And the internet has become commonplace. Where the internet really started changing uh, was around 2000, obviously, but 2010 uh, to 2008, that time frame, is really where you saw a huge spike in the e-commerce side. Because now all of a sudden what was happening is it was no longer about building sites for views. There was just so much content out there. You were distributing the views throughout the world. But what do mm-hmm. I what do I have this site for? What is the purpose of this? And that is commerce, right? And to me, that's the real thing. Is it education? Is it, you know, which is entertainment or sorry, education, entertainment, and then there's commerce, right? What, what kind of category are you in? Are you providing jokes, which is, you know, three quarters of the internet? Are you providing information, you know, uh, which is also three quarters of the internet with good jokes? And then, you know, are you making money off of that? And most sites still do not have a secure connection. Most sites do not have any form of monetization other than maybe some Google ads and stuff like that, which is pennies on the dollar, if that. You know what I mean? So the real concept there is e-commerce. Now, when you get into the e-commerce and you're asking people to give you money, any moment in that path that gets interrupted or they walk away and don't come back, okay, is bad customer experience because you fail, yeah. you've left money on the table to use the old analogy. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And that's really what customer experience or user experience in the world of e is. It's less about, do you have a payment broker? It's less about, are the SKUs set up? It's less important about, you know, what the backend platform is, you know, whether or not it's Shopify, WooCommerce, uh, you know, the new pay, uh, Square space that's coming out, which is basically Wix with Square, you know, and the list goes on. All of these things have the basic stuff, but at the end of the day, you're the one creating that journey, you know, and like I said, are you providing something worthy of an unboxing, you know, or is it just something that shows up in a brown paper bag? And that is really the same thing, no matter whether or not it's education, entertainment, commerce, you know, the list goes on. Commerce UX is what ensures that the person pays you. Yeah. So the person who has probably, not probably, who has mastered the unboxing or the user experience is obviously Jeff Bezos with Mm -hmm. Amazon. Mm -hmm. Um, It has a huge impact on everybody else who exists who wants to sell anything um i kind of wanted to tie that in with the e-commerce and how overall they like what impact it has um on the overall online experience for anybody yeah so so 
you're now comparing everything to an, what people use, right? So if Amazon is, you know, the, the market share of e-com, or, you know, mm-hmm. back in the day, it might have been eBay, let's say, right? The same concept. Basically, you're yeah. going in into a bunch of an affiliate sites where people are not like eBay doesn't own any of its content. Amazon, for the most part, doesn't own any of its you know inventory. It's all stuff that they're storing and, and, and shipping. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. And you're paying for that storage space and you got to have X amount there to be able to sell and all that stuff. But my point being is you're compared to that. If you don't do free delivery. You lose business. Because Amazon does free, <laughs> right? Exactly, right? Uh, so, so it's that part of the user experience, right? Now, where do you make your money? Are you losing your money, right? Uh, a lot of people have shifted to really fancy meal ordering apps, and I'm not going to mention them over the last year and a half, that take away mm-hmm. 35% of the money that would have normally gone to the restaurants. Okay, so the user experience, it gets delivered, da, 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 but the place that you're ordering from is slowly going bankrupt. Okay, so yeah. so so it's that mix of of being able to have great commerce, great user experience, and a, hopefully a sustainable business model. Okay, so the user experience keeps people coming back, uh, keeps people into that brand space. So if you're Amazon, but back to the point of Amazon, or even eBay as the example, the buy now option, the upsell cross sells. The old Big Mac, would you like fries with that? Okay, those are all things that you see in the Amazon. So when you're building a, a e-commerce type layer, these are the things you also need to think about because people are used to certain behaviors. You know, when we think about the standard shopping cart model, the checkout model, you know, where I'm adding stuff to my, my cart and then I'm doing my mm-hmm. checkout and then I go, like that has been standardized across how many sites, right? It's that basic in your mind, you know what that path looks like. If I were to deviate dramatically from that path, you would get lost and leave. Yet, Mm -hmm. I remember back in 2004, where we were literally building a shopping cart from scratch. There was no concept of what a shopping cart was. You know what I mean? And then we spent, we literally spent a million dollars building this shopping cart and it turned out that what the client really wanted was more of a PO system because it was more B2B versus B2C, business to business versus business to consumer. Business to consumer is yeah. great for shopping carts. Business to mm-hmm. business, you typically have a PO or for a thousand unit. It's in a completely different user experience, thus a completely different platform, right? So it's those small little things. It's not just how you design it. It's not how you build the platform, but is it actually Mm -hmm. achieving its end goal? And are you making that task easy? You know what I mean? Your dad, I think, had a question there. Yeah, yeah, totally. Most businesses, well, let's be honest. Most people throw up, uh, let's take websites. Most websites are thrown up, literally thrown up puke. You know what I mean? Uh, To to quote Mitch, I came, uh, you know, I came, I saw, I left. You know, that's horrible user experience, right? Well, there was another term. I think it was like, I came, I saw, I puked, I left, right? And that <laughs> that's fundamentally what most sites are, right? Whether or not that's it doesn't load up fast enough. It's horrible on mobile. It's not secure. All of these things that send those telltale signals either to the browser. Like if you don't have an mm-hmm. HTTPS site, the browser might not even let the site even come up on some browsers nowadays, right? You're not even showing yeah. your website to the person. I think it'll say it'll say like safety warning, yeah, like, exactly. and then you'll have to press advance. And and a lot of times people tend to get scared and go, well, oh, I don't know. That's your user experience. What was the user experience in that scenario? You couldn't get the person through the front door. You know, and, mm-hmm. and whether or not you call it a funnel, whether or not you call it a pathway, whether or not you call it, you know, whatever, it's from point A to point B, and if it's e-commerce, point A is they know about it and want to buy it, and they've successfully mm-hmm. got it and got it delivered, right? That's the end. And that's the other thing, too, is most people, when they think about e-commerce, they focus just on the digital side. You might have a great, amazing user experience purchasing it, and I'll use food again. The delivery service delivers you wet, soggy crap. Where's, <laughs> where was the failure? Was it the restaurant? The food was good when it left. Or was it the mm-hmm. half hour of driving around the city trying to find your house because, you know, whatever? What's the user experience? So the fulfillment 
is almost as important as the e-commerce because most people, and to use Trevor's point, overlook the user experience of the fulfillment side. A person knocks on your door and puts the box down. A person takes a photo of the box and sends you that image confirming that it's been delivered. What's the, what's the difference there? Both things got delivered. One, you're not necessarily home and you've got an email and you know it's there. The other one is you show up and it's maybe on your porch, right? Same delivery process, but they're just that one extra step completely changed. And in that user experience moment, they typically ask for a survey review. You know, how did we do, mm -hmm. right? The upsell. What is that mm -hmm. overall user experience, right? And then do you then follow up with that person after? You know, so, so this is if it's something that they may buy again. Do you remind them of stuff? Do, they, do you upsell them to, you know, up, upcoming newsletters? All of those things are part of that user experience. And whether or not it was back in the day where I was literally one-on-one -on -one with a BBS or one-on-many -on -many with the early browsing, you know what I mean? Or, or the modern day Shopify type sites and whatnot, mm -hmm. that user experience is end to end. And that so is, yeah. Go for it. So I was going to, I was going to say, I've, we've been, um, I've been talking a lot and learning a lot about core web vitals. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, in my, from my take, it seems like it's like the shiny new toy, um, like load speed, interactivity, visual stability. Obviously these are all kind of connected with UX, but I just kind of wanted to ask you about if you could, if you could elaborate on the importance of them and how also it relates to user experience or UX. Yeah. Well, let, 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 let me introduce this. So there's UI and UX. So there's the user experience, which is the UX, okay? And there's the user interface, okay? The user interface and the user experiences are one and the same and completely separate. And what I mean by mm -hmm. that is one is the emotion and one is the task, okay? So the user interface is, does it work? If I click on a button, does it click through, right? Uh, the user experience is if I click on that button, did I get what I wanted? Did I get what I expected to see? Did I get disappointed, right? The emotion. And the emotion, we all know this, is three quarters of the battle. If you've got a strong brand with strong emotion that you're tied to, you will not even second guess. But mm -hmm. that always starts with a strong UI that makes the task possible to provide then a strong UX. And most people might get into the UI because they're using a common platform and a lot of these platforms have ha built up the, like I said, that step-by-step -step of a checkout is a UI. That's a user interface. But the experience that you have with that, you know, may vary from an Amazon to a Braggle to an Apple. Like I said, you go you, back in the day when you would walk into an Apple store, you were paying a premium for that Apple store experience. Mm -hmm. They were part. Hello, how are you doing today when you walk in? <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, they, they, they were able to give you the receipt and the email that to you by the time you leave. And it's, it's there. And like that, imagine that on a website. Okay. Imagine mm -hmm. what that Apple store converts into a user interface. How do you make an Apple store layout, physical, retail, okay, into a site? And then how do you make that experience move over as well? They're two different tasks, two different skill sets as well. And luckily, most of the UI has gone around so long and has been around so long that it's basically become one, two, three variables. You know, it's kind of just simplified and simplified and just standardized for lack of a better term. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know, so where's the differentiator there? Where all, if everything is a standard, how do you differentiate? And that's UX, the experience, the emotion. And it's less about the user in that because the user could be anything. It could be a bot. You know, we talk about SEO. If you make your site SEO bot friendly and it knows how to navigate, you've just made the experience of that bot very good and therefore it'll stay and spend more time, right? I'm not, I'm joking and I'm not, right? It's the same. Yeah. Thing. Did it have a good time? Did it stay? Did it, to use Mitch's... I came, I saw, I puked, I left. No. And in the case of e-com, I came for something. I saw what I wanted. I did not puke. I purchased it and I left happy. That's user experience. 
I think my, I kind of came in this with my questions, I think hoping to relate them to the internet. And the biggest thing I took away, which I wrote down here is that it goes beyond sites because you had mentioned about the food companies. Mm. That's um, as much as it is related to the site, you go on, you order, it's very simple, which is why people continue to um, order that way. Um, It is also about the experience of them bringing your food to the house and you having your food in front of you, not having to leave your house which I mean, realistically, people have been doing that, like pizza stores specifically, have been doing that for a long time, because you've been able to call and be like, hi, can I get a delivery? And that, but um, now it's just beyond pizza stores, it's all stores. And uh, yeah, that was, that was probably the biggest thing I took away. Which well, was to, kind of- to your point there, one of the biggest th- changes there when all of those things came in, when, when the original systems were built, you know, I will call up a pizza, or, you know, yeah. I want a number one, I want a large you know, uh, with this, right? The orders were simple. The problem is when all of these things became, especially in the COVID world, there are now thousands of variations in these businesses in many cases, right? So to put them all up on a site required a lot of these things, you know what I mean? But at the end of the day, if your soggy chips are soggy, <laughs> you know, like when, when I define the HF munchies way back when, this was, you know, the little pet project that I had, Part of it was a delivery-based model. The idea was that we would pick stuff up from multiple restaurants in the neighborhood to have a special combo, right? The combo would be unique to HAF munchies. You would be HAF in, in need of munchies, right? And you know what that means. But my point being, yes. okay, thank you. <laughs> but we would focus on the delivery at a premium. It was mini catering was the idea. Okay, Mm -hmm. so it's not about doing 10, 15 deliveries in the span of a night and being horrible. It's having you knock on the door with the tray of the food, opening up the food on their table, serving them the beer or whatever, you know, that that true restaurant, the Apple store experience. How do you, you know, get that? And if you only did five of those, but they were little mini catering projects where you just one every hour for a five hour stint, you would make the Mm -hmm. same thing. And that was the user experience. If the experience is so much greater, you're able to charge a premium. And that's the big, big, big learning lesson here is the better your UX, the more premium, the better your UI, the more likely it'll work. So if you've got great user interfaces, you click, I'll give you an example. I went to a website for a client and I started clicking on all the images and they were all Mm -hmm. dead links. I mean like, I wanna know your profile photo. All of the hot links were set to the text. None of the images had those buttons. So big thumb, small screen, what do you think of to click now in 20, what are we now? (laughs) You know, 2021. 2021, (laughs) yeah, Yeah, versus 10 years ago. Yeah, 10 years ago, the user experience and the user interface was about clicking on the text. If you now use that same model now, you get a frustrated person smacking on a screen or clicking on a button with no click through because you just yeah. didn't make that shift. And that's where you think, I, I know, if you were to go to a site, what are you going to push on? The big shiny button or the big shiny image? You're not going to try to find the link on all the text. Mm-hmm. And that's the user experience has changed. How do you define how many deals did that guy lose because the pages that he created were never clicked through to because his UX and UI failed. Well, uh, on that note, on I, that note. Think, I think we are going to continue with user experience. Like it's just going to continue to change just like everything else. Like we've already come so far and it definitely has a lot more to go and it's going to definitely be interesting in the years to come. Uh, to see where where we're headed, I guess you just gotta just gotta wait and see because I don't I don't think anybody knows. No one knows, but at the end of the day, no everybody knows what they want. They want mm-hmm. to walk away with what they happy. wanted, happy. Mm-hmm. That's simple. It's working backwards from that emotion to get that end goal. That's that's fundamentally it. So whether or not it's digital, whether or not it's old bulletin boards, whether or not it's the old web, whether or not it's the new e-com world, whether or not, you know, down the road when we're doing voice chats to Alexa or whatnot, that Mm -hmm. user experience is fundamentally, did I get what I want and am I happy? Mm -hmm. And on that note, we're going to cut out. Thank you, Rob. Ciao, ciao.